episode 75. We made it. We actually made it. And you said we'd never last. You said... I will do 10 episodes with you, whore bitch, and then I'm done. Yeah, and think... now look at us. I have it tattooed across my ass crack. Hell, that's... In my ass crack. Have you... Are you aware With of quotation dynamic? marks. Are you aware... You're the one who's kept it going. Yeah, yeah I, no. I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's literally me being like, you want to hang out with me? No, please hang out with me. I'm busy with Gwyneth and, and Francis. Okay, but like, maybe... I'm seeing Emma Black. Okay, but like, maybe we could... Hang... We could do a podcast. Oh, maybe. Okay, well, I was thinking maybe we could try. I don't like it. Okay, do you want to be on my show? Oh, I've, w- I've worn a special outfit for you for episode 75. The pink and red. Pink and red. But wait for it. I've double buttoned so what? I can button down my cardigan. <gasps> if anyone listening, I'm buttoning down my cardigan right now. And below it, I have a T-shirt, oh my God, which I can bo- also <laughs> button down to reveal the breast Hello, edge. Boo- so, but I can't, I can't, I mustn't because it's we, we must be okay, respectful. We must be. Now. Um, I preferred I, when you were less respectful and I got to see your tits more. But I okay. want to let people know, number one, what the podcast is because we're getting new listeners, which is very oh, yeah. exciting. Hello, welcome to Trusty Hogs. I'm Catherine Bohort. This is Helen Bauer. Hello, we both do stand-up comedy. We both do stand-up comedy and this is a podcast where we talk about our lives and then we help solve listener problems. And I think it's a fun time. It's a really fun time. Through the fog, step Trusty hogs, yeah, you're gonna give them your problems and they will solve them, or maybe they won't, and that's your problem. They'll have guests and Andrew White on the tech. Oh, it's Helen and Catherine as the trusty hogs. Trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. Now, over history of this podcast, all 75 episodes, for episode 25 and episode 50, we had an exciting random guest. What did we do on 25? <coughs> um, I hired a tarot card reader. Yes, you did. And it was life-changing. Her name was Penelope. If you haven't listened to that episode, I'd recommend going back. I also found it life-changing. It was incredible. Episode 50, we hired someone to go through our speech patterns so we could learn how to do impressions of each other. That did not go well. I think it was very successful. I don't think anybody... Oi, to... Irish, oh, no. Stop um, it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> stop it. Stop it right now. Now, we have got Penelope coming back into the studio not today not today okay we've got her for our like what would be an exactly a year from the last time we had her in so we can get it bang on and I think we're doing astrological charts what do you think we're doing (laughs) astrological charts there you go I was like (laughs) brace yourself lesbians we're doing astrology oh is that a lesbian thing now well lesbians are keen on asking you like time of birth kind of at the minute you know yes 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 11 40 p.m for you yes Really? 11.40 p.m. Interesting. I don't, How about you? Well, I think I might be like a 5 p.m. baby, but I need to check with my oh, mom. Fun, 5 p.m. <laughs> I know, I'm a snooze. I know. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm so boring. Helen thinks I'm boring. Um, no, what? hey now. You do. Just because I tell people you're boring doesn't mean you are boring. There has to be a boring one in any friendship. I'm the boring one in some friendships. Yes. But get your hand off me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Could you imagine if we did episode 75 and it was our last episode? Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine that. Currently, I can imagine it. I think it's amazing that we've managed to keep this going this long. Me too. I genuinely am in awe of us. Have you had any reactions to the Stuart Goldsmith slapping you? None. Really? People just thought you deserved it. For a couple of episodes, I got... People just thought you straight up deserved it. mauled. (laughs) Mauled. By Com Com Pod. And I had no one going, oh my God. Everyone was like, yeah, no, feels right. Yeah, that seems correct. Feels right. Fascinating. And it was so annoying because I really thought it was going to bruise so badly. You didn't get the drama? I got nothing. I'm so sorry Absolutely. to hear it. Absolutely. so sorry It was it. devastating. That is gutting. Hey, what's going on with you? Okay. Oh, for God's sake, don't. I want to let you know that over this last 75 episodes of working with you and talking to you every single week mm-hmm. on mic and off, I really feel like I've blossomed as a woman and my knowledge has increased. You're going to talk about the Black Death now, aren't you? A hundred percent. For fuck's sake. Here's the thing. I am now so into his, like so into history. Mm -hmm. Like, have I told you about the short battalion already? Yes. You're welcome. Multiple times. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So I've decided to leave the world wars to the side at the moment just Mm -hmm. because it was getting a bit too involved. Yeah. Which is hard to do when it's in the past, but is it? Do you know what I mean? We're still feeling the repercussions of it to this day. 
Lest we forget. Nobody else. Lest we forget. Nobody else has forgotten. Lest we forget. You're the only one who just found out about World War One. No, I knew about World War One. I. I just didn't know about. Oh God, terrible. Anyway, Can we get, come on, get on with it. You want to talk about it? Let's hear it. I've now learned about the Black Death. Of course, you have. A recommendation from a friend. From being a podcast. Like, Do you know about the plague? Now. I am aware of the play. Wait, from a podcast or a book? From a podcast. Which not podcast? From a book. They I just thought... They didn't write back then. <laughs> oh, see, Jesus. They wrote, they, did, they wrote, but it's not like you can't buy it in Waterstones. Do you know what I mean? Yes, Helen, but you, you can't... I'm not they were just to, reading the Bible. Helen, I'm not asking you to read a diary entry from a person in well, the Well, that's like what a, you'd need to do. I was saying, had you read a history book? You know, the ones they write now about history. Yeah, but that's the thing. I don't trust history books. Also, they like, did write then. It's I just all want to hearsay. Like... Because nothing was written down. There's no photographs. So it's just someone having a good guess at it. Unlike this podcast you've listened to. But you know, like the Tudor stuff. It's like, how do we actually know? Sorry, but are you, you going to tell happened? me that first source actually peer-reviewed historical texts are less good yes. for history yes. than... Podcasts. Podcasts. Well, because then I'm just continuing the tradition of history being passed down through audio mediums. So, like, Is it audio mediums or is it spoken mediums? But you, right. Do you understand history, though? Because I don't think you're getting this right now. <laughs> I did a history degree. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we all did a history degree. Do you know what I mean? Well, we didn't all do a history degree, but we what? all, like, we've all lived in the world. Like, yeah. What? Like, but like, I I also know about history. Do you no, know what I, I mean? I, agree I also you... have been to the Natural History Museum. No, I understand people yeah. can learn about history, and I, I think you should. Yeah. I think that's. And good. I am, I am. But you just said, did I know anything about history? And yeah. I, I, but I, I don't know I if you understand like... how history works. Okay. Because like, what's happened is you've swallowed. I don't know if it's the blue or red pill. I've actually never seen the Matrix, but you've swallowed one of the pills, <laughs> which makes you believe that all history is as it's written. But thing is, like, so you know, we're like. You don't learn to think uncritically about history when you do a degree in it. But like, we're sort of like, oh, Henry VIII was like this, but it's just sort of like, that's just one person telling someone, that person telling someone, obviously they increase it for drama over the tellings. Like, like what let's say, think? let's say, <laughs> let's say at Christmas time, one of my friends was a bit of a bitch. By the time the story's being told to their like, partner or their work colleagues it's like they were a massive asshole because it's been like pepped up for the storytelling Obviously, right Obviously, Helen historians need to actually use like yeah, yeah but then they like they add drama in to make it better so I'm not saying that Henry Are VIII wasn't a nightmare film scripts but like <laughs> sort of very similar yes 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 no um, I'm saying to you that with yes. history mm -hmm. often you're right it's written by the victors it's often predominantly written of war military history so yes. you predominantly get male history yes. it's often written by men it's often yeah. written in a period that is yeah. long thereafter however it yeah. is true to say that we are increasingly reading social history we are increasingly yeah. requesting of our historians mm -hmm. actual like yeah. more and more thorough research yeah. more and more primary sources more and more yeah. peer reviewing yeah. obviously it's imperfect but i don't think the vibe is like i'm saying i believe like history happened I'm just saying, I'm like, glad to hear some it. of the, like, some of, like, so, like, we just sort of, like, <laughs> it's interesting to know exactly, like, how would they know that they said that? Do you know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Like, we, yeah, we know a lot of it's just, like, hyperbole or... or and then you also, it's so easy to be, like, it's like Romeo and Juliet feels historical, but it's I not. I don't feel that way. But it is because it was written in history times. It was written in the in the past? In the past. Is that the word you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, in the, the 1500s, past? yeah. <laughs> It's, just, it's interesting, like, things like we don't know who Shakespeare was, you know? Uh-huh. Anyway, Black Death. But wait, before you get... Okay. This is a great example of, like, you just you think you know it, but you called? don't. I think this is called uh, Short History. So yeah. they just give it to you all in, like, 50 minutes. Oh, great. Well, that'll definitely yeah. be comprehensive. How silly of me to think that a book would be more useful. Go on. Well, you know how whenever talk, everyone talks about the plague, they're always slagging off rats in it? Yeah, for spreading. Like, rats have the worst rep ever. For spreading it. It wasn't them. Huh? It was the fleas on the rats. And I don't think we should blame the rats for that. No, that's a hundred percent like you can't help that's like someone like oh, Helen made Anne Marie scratch her head because she had nits. It's not my fault the nits chose me and then transferred to her. That's not yeah. on me. Yeah. So yeah. it was everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Please stop screaming. Everyone had the everyone had the plague. Yeah. It was awful. It never even fully disappeared. Uh -huh. It's just that there's like a couple of schools of thought as to where it went. Okay, which but are? like, because so many people died that they're like, maybe the people who genetically might have had a mutation, which meant they could survive it, were the ones who were breeding okay. and managing to keep people alive. So that just sort of slowly got eradicated that way. Mm. Also, just because so many people had died, like the uh, something about bodies, temperature. I don't, I don't understand it. Have you heard about plague pits? Yes. 
awful. Yes. So whole towns were dying. Now, I right, you're both looking at me like I'm thick. I knew about no, the play. We've done the London Dungeons, and so yeah. far you haven't advanced the information they give you. Okay, but in the plague, so I knew about it because when have I was this right now, Helen. No. Why are you, Why are you scratching your head? Because I'm thinking. So Helen, when I was Helen, 16, look at me. check it. You can check it if you I want. Don't I don't have want any nits. I don't have it. any nits. Obviously, I'm allowed to scratch my head and not have nits. Now I'm paranoid. I need you to. But stop the more scratching. I talk stop about having, <gasps> oh my god, I've got a really sad fact for you as well. Us oh, is separate. Let me tell you this first. So when I was 16, my mum's drama school, one of her students in it was in her play at college um, called The Roses of Ian, which was about a village which had the plague and they locked themselves in so they could all die there. Yeah. Very powerful. So many villages did that. Yeah. They'd get the plague and they'd lock themselves in. Yeah, so it's and then people, it was so awful. Horrific. And people didn't know where to go. And it was 100% like, but then it just like, so I was listening to this podcast and it's like, the rich were surviving more because they could go out to their country estates and just not see anyone yep. and just live off their land. Yep. Whereas the poor didn't have that choice. And it really got me thinking like, that's what happened with COVID. Because do you remember at the beginning of COVID when we didn't know, when it, when it was like, it felt, such like a death sentence yeah that like short moment when it was like if you get it there's a good chance you'll be hospitalized and you yeah. won't make it back out again yeah well, and there like, was no vaccine there was no there was treatment. no vaccine there was no treatment there was a very little understanding but like we knew it attacked the lungs and people couldn't breathe yeah. and um but then the rich people could just like go out and be like well we're not going to contract it but the poor people started to go to work and do jobs mm -hmm. and i was like we have not changed no. and it got me thinking about that how awful is that that we're still in the plague now Okay, so a couple of things. Okay. You're right. I, I think know. that like... Class... And they just drop people in Okay, pit. when I said a couple of things, you yeah. let me have one word. Is yeah. that what happened just then? Sorry. Okay. Um, yes, class structures are very similar in terms of like the uh, impact of a uh, pandemic. Was, yeah, we you're need so to right. change. That is, no, that's true. That's an interesting insight. Thank well you. Well done. Um, secondly... We're not sure we're the exact same. We haven't changed at all in so far as like we pretty quickly developed a treatment and a vaccine. Which is very good. Medicine has really yeah. come on. That's yeah. good. That's yeah. good, right? Yeah, we like that. Yeah, very good. Thank you to our scientists. I've always thank said that. To our si thank you to our, our scientists. scientists. Yeah, the message of this podcast. Thirdly, um, this is like a light pod. So yeah. like then you flagged that the next fact is also super dark. Do you want to get that out of the way? So maybe I could say like we could talk like something <laughs> chipper. I just think it's important that we do learn on this podcast. And I don't know if you're getting this, but I'm getting a lot of hogs coming up to me being like, I'm finding you very interesting. You're teaching me a lot. <laughs> which means there's a lot of thick shits running around there who are very grateful for me doing the effort. Real doing dummies the in the mud. <laughs> this is something Gwyneth told me. Go on. So there's a new trend on TikTok mm. of young people. Mm. <laughs> So they, they look down the lens and they start crying because they're like, I only just realized the the back of my head is flat because I didn't get picked up enough as a baby. Fuck off. And then they cry and there's really sad music playing Fuck in the background. Off. And then I found the back of my head and it's flat. That's not what that means. It does feel it. I didn't get picked up. That's not what that means, oh, Helen. Oh, no. Dear, what about you? I'm fine. Yeah, oh, damn it. <laughs> But that means that so we were just all just like left there lying flat. No, mine, mine's not flat. No, yours isn't. Mine is. But also, I don't think that that's what that means. I think people's heads are different shapes, often for multiple reasons. Yeah, because I fell out my well, um, steps, baby. high chair. No, I fell out my high chair. Okay, but also like lots of people could be like, aren't heads just different shapes? I don't know. I, I cracked my head open when I was three because I was going through a phase of only eating ice cream. And my mum was You're trying to give me something that, that was not a phase, <laughs> not a phase of the last like, 29 years. Cream. And I was like rocking my high chair being like, you're a fucking whore bitch, mum, <laughs> give me some ice cream. And I rocked so much that I went backwards and I landed on my head and cracked it open. Jesus. Naughty Helen. Okay, well. Same year that I overdosed on Cowpole, my poor mum. <laughs> feels, like, feels like poor you, but okay. Um, God, everything you say is so dark. Um, it's hard to, we know where to start, except to say that um, the trend I'm getting on TikTok, that's yeah. so interesting that your actor friend is getting this like profound realization that so actually I'm good. even more of a victim than I thought I was. Yeah. Whereas mine is um, just women in their. 40s and 50s okay. using this filter that takes them back to their teens so bottom screen is them that top screen top screen is them like just filtered to shit right they just like supposedly look like themselves and the teenagers but i did it and i didn't look like me as a teenager because it made my face first of all thinner what that's not how teens were. i was like no. no and second of all just looks like 
so fuzzy and filtered and I was like that doesn't I don't reckon I also didn't have like eyebrows my teeth weren't good I was like what are you talking about um, like a classic Irish teen it's like it wasn't like, <laughs> a classic like a classic 90s teen right like no one looked better then what are you talking about I was just like what this isn't but so it's these women and the, the filter comes on yeah. and they immediately start crying <gasps> and they're like hello could you imagine being I that honest I haven't seen you in a while no no everything's gonna be okay I just want to give her a hug I just nothing's changed this is why I can't my do TikTok my smile I is can't. still the same no no no, know, no 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 I no know. I can't do it I know but it's just like shut the fuck up oh my yeah so I also um, don't do that on TikTok like I, the ones I but like but it's interesting that we're targeted in different ways but it's emotional manipulation videos like I do like being emotionally manipulated by my algorithm like dogs being rescued yes please off the street. I love it when Dogs they Dogs being there. Oh no, when they come back from war. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> I'm not even like a war person baby, in that way. Ba baby, but when baby's they... seeing colour for the first time. Oh my God, don't. Baby's hearing for the first time. Baby's getting first oh. hearing aids. I'm like, oh, yes, yeah. that deaf baby's yes. good. <laughs> when they get the coloured glasses. Oh, when they oh slot them God. over their oh, eyes and they're like, yeah. oh. And they're like, oh, God, everything's green. It's just so I'm trying nice. to do that with Sunil. Just take his glasses off him for a full day and then pop him back on him in the evening. See if he'll be like, ha, 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 my baby. Um, I tell you what I do like of the photos ones is we've got the algorithm where they show you the old people who have given their old photographs and someone's colorized them. Oh, that's And nice. they get to see like their, like a picture of their parents like in color for the first time. Oh. They like died so many years ago. And this is one, it's like a really classic one. I've like, popped up a million times to me. And everyone's looking at these photographs, they're really emotional. And then one woman, her photograph pops up and she was like, mm, I remember that dress being blue, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's immediately that's pedant. amazing. Then, that's amazing. That's us. That's amazing. That's great. I love it. What's your favorite thing to pop up on your algorithm? Like, what's the thing that, like, if it pops up, you stop? Mm, I don't think we should go. I'm toxic. How toxic? I'm toxic. Oh my god, do it! Is it people getting Botox? No, but it is. There's all. I get a lot of like. And I gotta stop watching them because it's like nonsense. Hey, we only need to stop watching the stuff we watch, but like. I don't think so I should engage with it. It's such a bad behavior. It's like. Is it spot picking? No, no. it's like. What blah eats in a day? Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's so toxic. I've seen some really good ones recently with popped up with being like, um, what do I eat as a fat person not on a diet in a day? Did you get those ones? Well, that sounds way better than no. It's I get great. like I get like what Florence Pugh eats in a day, oh. what Mila Kunis eats in a day, and I'm just like, stop fucking watching this shit. It does like they eat whatever the fuck. Put your phone them. close to me, and I'll talk about my algorithm. I so want I fat get, people um, in a day. What, that sounds divine. Like, what I eat in a day is a fat person who's not on a diet. Um, what I eat is someone who's in binge eating recovery, and it's just someone just like living their lives and just eating food. I'd love that. And it's just it's just nice, and you get good ideas. But you know like, what would be better is if I. I just didn't give a fuck what any like if I also didn't care what I ate in a day like I was just like yeah but you're you are a foodie so I think that's gonna like you do like looking at recipe books you like recipes you like food yeah but I don't think that's why I'm not looking at it you're not looking at it for the, the right food. reason I know it's like it's a, it taps into the 15 year old me that like would be like that would read magazines because it was like so the here's the diet of like ex celebrity, which is like essentially all coded language for how you get thin, or at that time just overt language for how you get thin, and it's like thinness is not wow. the end goal, my friends. And we also know the secret is two bowls of special K and nothing else. Everybody knows <laughs> it. Just remember that, and you'll be fine. It's not that hard. No. I tell you who I'm loving on Instagram at the moment. Who? Um, her name is Kirsty, and she does plus size travel vlogs. Okay. And like she came up with my algorithm, and then someone had like mentioned her. And I watched it. I just love her. What's she's vibe? like, so her vibe is she's a, she's a big old gal and she's just traveling around, having a great time. And she's like, Where's I always from? thought England, but she's like, I always thought like I would travel when I was thinner, when my body would be able to like be on like in the world easier. And I wouldn't have to worry mm -hmm. about would I fit places, mm -hmm. would I feel welcome. And then she's like, but then I thought, fuck it, I'll just go traveling. Yes. And she's like sharing all these yes. tips as well as just sort of like right. just like getting on a plane and being like, hey, can I have a seatbelt extender? And they're like, yeah. And she's like, it's that easy. Yeah. It is that simple. Yeah. And like talking about 
and now she started organizing like her own trips that people can go on where she's like, I will do everything for you. This is a plus size friendly trip. I'll make sure every chair oh. is accommodating for you. Every bed, you will not be made to feel uncomfortable at any one point. Oh, it will book your plane seats. Like everything will be accommodated to wow. you. And I just think she's fucking fire. Like yeah, she's me too. just I mean, I doing. Hate that. I hate that you need to have like somebody to assist you to have the fucking world accommodate for <gasps> different bodies. I and when I look so at her, annoying. I'm like, we're quite similar sizes. Yeah. But like, like, I also think like, I'm so lucky that I hadn't, my brain didn't do that route of like, oh, I can't do that because I'm fatter. Mm -hmm. Like I've, luckily that hasn't like got into my yeah. system. But I was like, that makes so much sense for so many people. Yeah. Oh, but I've, but isn't it funny? I, Hmm. How do I say this in a way that's like, let's be clear, I'm not a fat person, nor do I pretend to know anything about the struggles of living in a fat body. But in everyone's a, relationship in a, in a with world their body is different. Cruel to yeah, fat yeah, people, yeah. And that is systemically fucked for fat people. Well, it's cruel for fat people, but we've also got a lot of great food running around the world at the moment. Hey, and I ain't arguing with that, but what I would say is, we I, think, I think a lot of women yeah. have lived their lives waiting to be a specific size before they give themselves yes. permission to do Yes. And I think that that I can only imagine how much worse that is when the world also goes, oh, this isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, they, like, you know, I, I my rules are self-made or yeah. have been. Whereas like the fucking universe is going, oh, yeah, no. And, and also you there's no seat for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also there is no clothes for you. And also it's like, fuck but off. I've, so I've I love her. I'll follow her. I'll follow her. I've traveled Sorry. a lot. Kirsty, I want to say Kirsty Leanne travels. But but if you're like but you're, and I've I've got to say I really have not um, I've done research before Kirsty Leanne travels great Kirsty plus side travel yes please she her hers she is fucking great okay, great well we should follow um but like the world is accommodating if you're willing to ask for the accommodation you need but also at your size right there are lots of people who are much that's better. the thing yeah yeah i also think i'm on that like size where like i think there's like a difference between for sure like, being able to buy clothes in shops and being able to buy clothes exclusively from one internet provider that's like, the thing yeah yeah yeah. you know i think there's a, so yeah i hear what you're saying so follow kirsty leanne travels if you want some goodness on your feed yes she's please. like there was one video recently where she was like i was worried as a fat person i wouldn't be able to just like get on the back of a moped and travel around with a tiny little Asian man and then she does yeah! <laughs> and she's like it was fine I just held on obviously a bit of a trickier <laughs> ride for him but I had a thumbs right there <laughs> yes! <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yes Christy I love her I love her I love her that's I love a get her. on the fucking moped babe yes <laughs> I love <laughs> j'adore yes please oh my god what I should have answered actually um, not least because it'd be less depressing on this peppy pod would be <laughs> the, um, this is episode 75 we've got to do real talk yeah would it the be the plague happened <laughs> for hundreds it wasn't just like a I year, know. 300 years. Well, and nobody else is awful. The there were ships, there were ships coming into ports, and one person left living on them. Curly Everyone girl videos, said, that's what I should have said. Curly, curly girl, girl videos. Video. If there's literally <laughs> a, basic if there's a single redhead with curly hair doing a video on her hair regime, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. <laughs> I've watched it. I'll, I'll, I'll absolutely watch it. There's a girl I, I follow, and I'm like, I will watch her do. Uh, she has the most amazing curl. Stop it. The mo will I ever do what she says? Nah, but will I watch her do it every <laughs> single time? I freaking will. Hell yeah. You must get loads of Iceland ones now as well. No, it's mainly the curly, curly girls. girls. It's a lot of curly girls. So it's a lot of redheaded girls with amazing hair. Phenomenal. And then Florence Pugh. Hair that the I day. could never. And then, yeah, it's a lot. Wow, it's a lot of women make me feel bad about myself. <laughs> Oh. And now that I follow Aubrey Gordon, it's a lot of Aubrey Gordon. She's Who's amazing. Aubrey Gordon? Aubrey Gordon is the co-host of Maintenance Phase. She's a fat girl about course, town, as she course. refers to herself, and fat girl about town. And she's just fucking brilliant. Love it. She's brilliant. Her, I just bought her book, actually, because I, I ran out of the podcast. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to read it. But she's just amazing. I love her. I love this for you. Thanks. You're getting into fat stuff, and I'm getting into war. Okay, well, when you... And we've changed. Can I say when you put it like that, like, I... I don't know that I want to phrase it as I'm getting into fat stuff. You're getting into fat that stuff. That feels like I'm getting into Pornhub. <laughs> 
How does that make it sound like you're getting into Pornhub? No, you don't say I'm getting into fat stuff. You're You're getting into fat content. Am, we love to see it. I am and I'm getting into to war and, and, and the Black Death and plagues and genocides and dictators. I am deep in fat content at the minute. I talked about good. dictators on stage the other you day. You've got to stop doing I that. I am changing. Got, see how I'm getting into fat stuff, but I'm not like, this is my cause. <laughs> I, sh- I should probably be... Sp- I should probably do a show about this. <laughs> People want to hear from me. <laughs> Dictators on my course. <laughs> they're, they're my main subject to discuss and say. Only because I share a star sign with so many. You so. got it. Oh, I heard you talk about this. I, like, <laughs> I actually liked it. It's good, isn't it? I, I thought it was a lit. There was a moment where you were like sort of insinuating that. Dicta- I was a dictator. Well, no, the dictators okay. were sort of like did all that stuff because they're just like fiery boys. <laughs> 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 and I felt like, ooh, let's, uh, mm, uh. But no, I did enjoy very much. Hey, yes, but they yes. are fiery boys. A lot of them are fire signs. I think we do have to look into I'm that. I'm a Leo. I'm not a dic- mm. I'm I'm a fire sign. I'm, well, I'm not a dictator, but I think we're both adjacent. We do a podcast and we're like, please listen to us and love us and give us a rating. Actually, do give us a rating and a review yeah, and online. Yeah, I wouldn't mind some gifts. And we'll take it five star and we'll no, take it 100%. Nice, actually, and yeah. definitely like, follow us and everything us, we do and like, come along to everything would be amazing. But we don't expect you to have to come to a rally or something like that. At the end of the day, we just like you chill about it, that, right? Like if you were going to vote for one of us. Um, I love dictators. Hey, I can't believe I just said can that. Can I tell you? I didn't mean that. No, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to blow past it, but yeah, I'm glad you apologized. But there's no dictator algorithm. I said dictator, dictator. I can't get a dictator algorithm going on Instagram. Heaven, I'm going to calm down. Can I tell you about yes. last night, please? Yes. What did you do last night? Right, I went and did the, the live Pappy show. Tell me everything. Pappy's flat slam. De- What's it yeah. called? Flatshare. Thank you. Flat slam. Um, I was on with Harry Hill and yes, that I man, Harry famously, Hill. very funny actually. He's the nicest man. He's so nice He's and really so funny. Nice. Really nice, really funny. But here's what I'll say is, so at one point you have to describe a famous, I had to describe, describe a famous car. Okay. By singing along to the tune of. I love puppies. A punk rock classic. <laughs> so good. They're like. <laughs> Uh, they sent me the song. I didn't know this, right? They just said before, they just said, can you familiarize yourself with this song? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. listened to the song one time. And was yeah. like, no, thanks. And then um, I get there and they're like, okay, so you've just described it. Sing it in front of everyone. Said, oh, I don't, I don't remember it. I, can I go to the corner and listen to it? And they're like, oh, we'll just play it. And I was like, oh, fuck, I don't, I don't know it. Like, this is really stressful. Shocking. And they're like, how do you not know it? Everyone knows. I was like, no, they don't. They're like, so I tried to play it on my phone. They're like, this is embarrassing. Just play it in the room. They played in the room. This entire room of, let's be honest, men. Start singing. Everyone sings every single <laughs> fucking word of this song. Wait, what's the song? Teenage Kicks, The Undertones. Oh, come on, babe. Everyone knows that song. I don't know that song. Okay, but that feels like a you thing. Like, And that became apparent, shall I say. That yeah. became very apparent. <laughs> but it was like, it was like... What like everyone was acting like I was crazy, and I was also like shocked. They all knew, like shocked. Yeah. So you got aggressive and defensive, and so obviously just being chill. they're yeah, yeah. like, I want to hold. You. I was like, fuck you. Yeah. Um, everyone in this room is wrong apart from me. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, I'm outnumbered significantly, but I'm right. You're right. You've got no dictator qualities whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, it was embarrassing. I had a hard and stressful time. I love Pappies. If you don't listen to Pappies, you should listen to it. It's I like the incredible. one that I've never figured out is Even called Ben. Got beef with them. The one who's called Ben is actually Oh, nice. Ben's so cute. They're yeah. all cute. I think I'm the Matthew Ca- Crosby of the group. Oh, 100%. What the frickin' M hell? M just broke something. M just broke Emma. something. M was nothing to M do broke something Emma. for the first time ever. No. Is that because you want me to talk more about the play? Hello, thank you so much for listening to Trusty Heart. Thank you so much. We just wanted to jump in really quickly and give our patron a little plug. Because it is thriving over there. Yeah, thanks so much to everyone who's joined. And if you want to join us, there's no pressure. Please enjoy the podcast otherwise. But if you do want to join us, there's so many benefits. You get an early access to the ep- episode. Mm-hmm. You get an extra episode a week. And you also get early access to our live shows. Now, the last one sold out in under 24 hours. So you <sighs> want to be a patron if you want to come to the one on June 4th, mm-hmm. uh, which will be on sale very soon. Please join. Please sign up. Please get a ticket. And hey, thanks to everyone who has already. And just a reminder, if you sign up now, there are over 70 extra episodes that you can access immediately. How many? Over 70, oh Catherine. Oh my God. It's unbelievable. But for now, please continue enjoying Trusty Hog. Bye. Hey. 
okay, should we solve a problem? I'd love to. I'm trying to think if I've got anything more from history to tell you. I don't want you to. Actually, I would like... I don't want you to. I would would like the listeners, they think there's a period of history that I would like to learn about to please send it in because I'm I'm interested in learning I'm listening to a podcast you might like. It's called If Books Could Kill. No, thank you. Okay. Um, Yeah, it's good. Why, why, why could books kill? It's about the negative impact of some of the most famous books. And so they did like what women are from Venus, men are from Mars. Oh, they did The Secret. They did. Um, it, it's good. I, I didn't like read it. these books. No, no, I haven't read them either because why would I read The Secret? I but... haven't read them. Yeah, but it's still interesting. You know, like culturally about them though, is, right? Is The Secret the one where you put it out into the universe? And the happens? secret is that if the reason you're poor is because you don't think about being rich enough. <laughs> God, you don't try genius. hard enough to think about being it's rich. Genius. <laughs> yeah. It's genius. It's it's phenomenal. Incredible. It's phenomenal. Also, the secret has this like thing in it that's basically like you don't need to know how it happens. Um, and if you do ask how it happens, then it won't happen for you. <laughs> and you're like. <laughs> This whole philosophy of just put it out into the universe and it will happen. I've got friends that genuinely believe that. Like, if are, you they want a man, Helen, are they also millionaires? Are they also millionaires? No, they live in like fucking Hook. But you know, the people who are like, you're like, or like they're like smoke and hot. And you're like, I just think it's like about being positive. And you're like, get the oh, fuck Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 fuck inside off. beauty that shines on your outside. And it's fuck like, no, it's a nose off. job. Like actually shut the fuck up. It's jeans, you motherfucker. I'm beautiful on the inside. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> You're beautiful on the outside too. I'm fine. Can I wear your hair clips, please? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, um, Oh, wait, do you have knits? Could you? I don't have knits. Obviously, I don't have knits. Um, Can I have a war problem, please? Um, Do I have any of those? Oh, well. Yeah, good. Good for you, Em. If any of our listeners are currently in a war zone, please send us in a message. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. That sounds quite low priority. Yeah, well, low priority, (laughs) but like if you wanted to. Helen. Yeah. You think anybody's listening to us in a war zone? You never know. Why would you listen to something that makes you more stressed? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, why, why do I even bother anymore? Okay, ready? I to make friends from different places. Oh, yes, ready. Okay, so this is from Elle. Hi, Elle. Hi, Elle. Uh, hi, all. I'm low-key addicted to this podcast. Woohoo! Thank you all for being inspiring yet hoggish delights. Why oh, low-key? Thank you. Um, key it up, babe. <laughs> high key it. Isn't low-key like the cool way of saying high key for yeah, I people? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh. We um, see you, Elle. Thank you very much. <laughs> My did you problem. just do that to be? Did you just do yeah. like two pe- for you signs for you? <laughs> <For youth. laughs> yeah, you're you're low key, so you. You want to go on know. the TikTok talks? <laughs> That's TikTok for the younger generation. Okay. TikTok talk. Make it stop. Make it stop, please, Jesus. Okay. That's fine. Let's have some Fanta and play cards. <laughs> Sorry, that was so unnecessary. Go on. Um, my problem is that I'm also low key in love with a long term romantic friend. Oh, did you uh, think it was going to be one of us? Wait, low key in love with a long term romantic friend. What's a long term romantic friend? I guess like friends with benefits. Yes, okay, someone they've been you. dating. Yeah, okay. um, but in love. I'm low key in love with a long term romantic friend who is the only individual in my life who doesn't have the same basic ethics and political standing as me. Here we go. During the referendum days, he was a vocal yes supporter and alienated not only me, but loads of his friends by getting into Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan, to name a few. Uh, at the same time, he was coming out as bi and clearly going through quite a lot of transitions, mm-hmm. which in some ways explained his reaction reviews, even if they weren't justified. Equally, we had... I'm just going to put the heater on. I'm not walking in. That's absolutely fine. Uh, equally, we had and have an unparalleled physical connection and share a long-distance codependency, which is admittedly not entirely healthy, but it's something that gives me a lot of pleasure and energy in life. Fuck because we live apart, it doesn't really encroach much on my life uh, to lean into the complexity of us seeing each other as seeing each other non-exclusively but am i immoral for sleeping with the enemy p.s i'm a queer woman five years his senior he's a cis man who was homophobic when we met but now enjoys sucking all the dick what a good <laughs> problem i love that you couldn't even handle it i was just going to get the heater i just needed to warm up and this is insane <laughs> Oh my God, I don't even know where to start. (laughs) Like, number one, incredible that your brain is able to fall in love with someone who clearly inherently, technically, you cannot stand. Like, but you still love them, but you can't. Like, this is- I don't find that that difficult to imagine. (sighs) We're friends. I love you so much. You're my princess. (laughs) 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 Oh my God. Okay, right, where do we start? Where do we start? Number one, you can't help who you fall in love with, and that's a great example. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can't help it, though. You can choose to pursue it or not. You can choose to pursue it or not, which is what the question is. But and you also, can't, only like, true if you think love is a feeling and not an action. 
But like I've been in love with people who haven't loved me back and I found it very hard to fall out of love with them. Mm. So like, even love when it's like not- Love or like fixation? An... No, like someone's like, I've had my heart broken from someone who- Yeah. Like wasn't a love for like not vice versa. Yeah. So like, I do think you can be in love with someone um, and have that be a thing, but also like be actively not wanting it. I also just think this person's, you're judging yourself harder than I think anybody else is judging you. Like there's a lot of self judgment here of like, so what I'm hearing is that he was homophobic, was pro Brexit. Yes. Has come out presumably has evolved and changed may still have a stance on like a nationalist stance on borders i'm not sure that has anything to do with like relationship based ethics or like how he treats you or how he treats people in his life like are so what are you saying if it's love what just I, go for it i'm not saying that i'm just saying like i'm not sure where all the self I, w I wouldn't date him, but that doesn't, I don't know why all of that, why that has anything to do with whether or not she'd date him. Because there's a moral quandary. I understand the moral quandary. But is it, but like. You do not understand it. I do understand it, you but I'm not sure that I, I necessarily think that like on a binary political issue, there are, we can say that like individual people are the enemy. As like, I think like, I would say the enemy in Brexit was political misinformation. Europe. No. The enemy was no, France. No. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> As it always bloody is. Here we go. Oh, I, just, I don't know. Like, I, I, I just think it's like a strange dynamic. I, I think like... Uh, I, I honestly think if you actually dated this man, if he lived in this country and you started dating, yeah. I, I think very quickly you'd be like... If he is... If he is consistently this person across lots of other moral issues, you quite quickly find him unattractive. True. But I actually think the narrative of like, can I, should I, is actually making him sexier. That's what it is. It's the the forbidden fruitness of it. Yeah. It's, it's like, the like, oh no, I shouldn't because he's so like, he's he, he had these opinions. It's like, like he's you so bad. fuck a Tory. I promise you, you'll wake up and be like, oh Jesus, they really still are a Tory. And then you'll be like, Pfft. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you but are like, like a he queer was so left leaning homophobic person. a couple of years ago, he's crazy. Like, like a, I think people can grow, and b, if he remains actually homophobic whilst being queer, then I think he'll be eventually like turned off by that. But isn't that like not uncommon for people who like? It seems like the most sexist people you meet could be women. The most homophobic people mm -hmm. you could meet could be internalized queer. homophobia. Like, if yeah. you're taught, if you are taught that you as a group are a problem mm. where there's like an acceptable way to behave as like that you should try to assimilate yeah. as quickly as possible and as much as possible then like overt queerness is going to threaten you obviously and you're going to learn internalized homophobia i'm really curious to see how this works out i think you do have to like to get over it which to be honest it sounds to me like you're wanting to get over it like you don't want this feeling but it is there mm -hmm. like run with it and that will probably quash it by itself but i'm not sure i buy that like every i don't know that i i don't know about romantic relationships i would take a different probably not find this person attractive but like i don't know that i buy that like all of our and i don't think it's healthy that all of the people in our life have the same political views as so us or reflect the our problem the well wouldn't really solve you know yeah I mean? that's true but she could get in the well with him and see who dies first no, no, no! I don't want. I don't want you going in the welly. Okay. Uh, well, oh my so, god! Oh, I tell you who could go in the well, Boris Johnson. But to circle back to my point, because of Brexit. While I don't think that I, okay. while I would not want to be in a jungle with fucking George Osborne, I do think like that. Like that is such a throwback of a name. I was asking you had the name George Osborne. The <laughs> streams of like, I think you were like when we talk about like utter extremes like Farage and like Johnson or like left leaning equivalents I think that like it's very easy to be like these two people could never get on but like the rest of us mostly are in like a and I'm like very lefty uh -huh. but are in a hodgepodge of nuance and I think if we stop talking to each other like it's That's so, so fucking true. hard like, to know the conversations do, do need to happen I just but don't know that you, but also I don't know that like like I get it though I don't want to fall in love with that I mean I haven't but I also don't want to I don't want to like could you imagine if like the next person I fell in love with was like a raging like 
Tory who thinks that like you know, oh, no, I'd women never hang out with you, abortions. but my boys... <laughs> like, I'd be like, yeah. oh, for fu- are you fucking kidding? Yeah. Steve! But I don't think you Come would. Come on! I don't think you'd fall in love with Steve. But you don't know. I fall in love but with here's... some absolute fucking dweebs. But loads of people have, like, slightly different views on things and, like, still manage to get on. Or Do you think even... it's good for E to maybe put herself in the shoes of, like, E for Braun? Like, what it was no, like it. for women no, of the past? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Enabling dictators. No, but just and to identify genocide. with like, you know, like I'm sure she wasn't like, oh, I really I don't hope know that I... we should compare a man who was pro-Brexit to Hitler. Yeah, no, but like just sort of vibes is what I was going for. I don't think that's the same vibe. Okay. I think this is the problem is like when we paint yeah. people into like, like a view equals extreme view, then I don't know that we get anywhere. So was this person just pro-Brexit? Just but like... Um, so I think they were also like listening to Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson. Oh my god, I forgot those details. Yeah, I really want them to get in the bin. Um, well, those are bad men. Well, those are bad men. Yeah, those are bad men, but they're designed to fill a gap. But here's the problem, right? Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson thrive in a context where we exclude the men who find them appealing from conversations in norm in like in real life Mm -hmm. because nobody listens to them and because nobody treats them with any like empathy and i'm not they do but no one i'm not the empathy they believe they deserve no look i'm not i'm not saying like poor men for a second no but i'm saying the expectations of certain people to have power and them oh, not receiving 100%. what they believe they were like society brought them up to believe they would have they get in their you. first nose now as adults i agree and they are being petulant about it because they've never faced this before so it's new i agree with you yeah oh, fuck, and those men are just so gross. i'm having it every day with sunil at home no like just telling him his first nose like changing the channel and i'm like no and he's like what because he's never faced it before wow that's really he turned off the hills yesterday Wow. Yeah. Silencing women. Silencing women. Silencing women. And Whitney and Elsie were having a conversation. Wow. About Silencing. Heidi. Wow. Who, by the way, is a women. fucking like. You know what will be good? Heidi's a nightmare. Watch, <laughs> watch the hills and picture this person that you're falling in love with Bobby. as Spencer Bobby. Pratt. Or Bobby. Justin Bobby. Justin Bobby. Oh, no, he, he is Spencer Pratt. As Spencer Pratt. You don't want to have 10 surgeries in one day. You don't want to do that because you've got you to go to your mum in Crested Boot, Colorado. She's so sad. And you've got to go to your mum. Do I look good? Do I look good? And the mum says, how do I tell you that I think you were more beautiful before? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's such it's a heartbreaking devastating. scene. It's devastating. It's devastating. Devastating. You know what? Forget all your problems. I just say watch the hills and just move on with your life. Did we answer this? Yes, yes. Something about men and then the hills. <laughs> You're welcome. Problem solved by the hogs. So, <laughs> next also, problem. Also, listen, listen, <laughs> no. jo- listen to the Jordan Peterson episode of Maintenance Phase, the one that they do on him. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Problem number two. Problem number two. I'm I've ready put, for it. I put my jumper on because I was cold. That's fine. You're allowed to layer up. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Ready, M. Ready, okay. M. This one's from you. 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 Yeah. Like the sheep or the like TV Ursula. show? The like Ursula. You. Like Ursula. Or Una. Una. Yeah, either of those. Or Undrew. I don't know. Anything. <laughs> Undrew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, Hogs. Hi, uh, Hogs. After some advice about dealing with a co-worker, I recently swapped careers and finally got my first job in this field. Uh, wait. Okay. Let me start this again. I wait, think advice from us? Yeah, it must be. Oh, hang on. They're after some advice, I think. Fine, I you're think right. they're after some yeah, advice yeah, about yeah, yeah. The, a co-worker. They just quit their job and got a new job in a field they obviously wanted to be in. Yes. Okay, go okay, on. What do I not understand? You got it. I'm after. They imagine they've said, "I'm after some advice about a uh, co-worker." Oh right. Okay. Are they Irish? Are they asking? It's very possible. Okay. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe. What do we need? <laughs> Maybe read it on the accent. Maybe it'll make more sense. No, Forty-five minutes <laughs> into trying to read the email, they got to the problem. <laughs> Go on. Um, unfortunately, there is a cock juggling thunder cunt of a co-worker in the same team as me. So, could you say that Ten again? points. Ten points in the description. <laughs> go for it again. How many did you say I don't want to say again. Thunder. Thunder. Come on, juggling thunder cunt. Yeah, there we cock go. Cock juggling thunder cunt. <laughs> You're a cock juggling thunder cunt. Thank you so much. That's the best thing anyone's That's ever written to phenomenal. us. That's phenomenal.
phenomenal. Phenomenal. They were yeah. originally my line manager, but due to not being able to organise a piss up in a brewery, have since been relieved of this DC. Amazing. They have directed all of their insecurities and inabilities onto other members of the team, and I wanted some advice on whether to speak up for them. They are quite submissive, passive people. Or whether to stay out of it. I don't want to be seen as a troublemaker, but also don't want to sit back and watch it happen. As I know what a hugely negative impact this person's actions have had on my confidence and mental health. Any suggestions would be great. Love the podcast. Keep up the great work. Oh my God. You be a troublemaker. I honestly, I could not have someone's back more than I have yours right now. Yeah, I mean, I do too, (laughs) to be fair. My only thinking is, my only thinking is. End them. End them. It's- Make them cry for mercy. No, may I say that I'm with you to a degree, but here's how... I- Can I just say... Oh, God, here we go. First of all... Everyone's going through something well, different. no, I wasn't going to say gotta that. they got to take everyone's perspectives into account. Well, I wasn't going to say that at all. No, okay. I wasn't going to say that at all. Quite. Certainly wouldn't say whoever his accent that was. Um, <laughs> no, I was going to say two things. The first is, when you're new, I understand the trepidation about wanting not to be the troublemaker because you're like... I just got here. I just want to do my job. I want to learn how to do my job and I don't want to become like everyone's fucking advocate. So I do get that. But but what I would say is I don't go anywhere anymore without receipts. So if I were you, I would personally, I'm young. I know the phrases. Wow. If I were you, I would start now writing down when things happen. No, because if you go in there and you go, it is my opinion that they go, well, we'll monitor it. Or, oh, it's like a, it's like a, you said, they said. I think there's something in being Make like, friends with H- HR now. No, I think you go to HR when you have like five examples of dates and times. So that then you're like, it's not like, this isn't a matter of opinion. This is like a genuine concern of things that are happening to my coworkers. And I think absolutely advocate for them, but I just think go in. Oh, this is such a, an example of you fighting clean and me fighting oh, I don't dirty. Think it's fighting I'm like, clean. go for their eyes and rip their skull off. Like, I don't th- I, I, <laughs> no, you're you're organizing a duel and you're meeting at nine eight, at sunrise. No, even. I'm organizing. You are. No, I'm organizing a scalping. You're like rip their skull <laughs> off. I'm like peel it all. <laughs> peel it. It's too measured for me, but it's so much more effective. Okay. I'd start doing things like um, taking animal shit into work and putting it in the toilet after they've been in there and be like, did you see what they just I think you did? wants to keep like, the job, though. D- no one's going to know it's because it's animal shit. They can't trace it back to you with DNA. I think... I Don't think... use your dog, obviously. Don't be a moron. <laughs> but, like, ruin them. Like, make them question every... M- gaslight them! Make them think that they're no, going mad. Helen. Make them feel like they're losing their mind. The thing is, they are losing, right? Like, they've already been demoted in the time that you've been there, which is a short period of time. So, obviously, there's some reference point at HR level or managerial yeah. level that these, this person is not competent. But I think you, what you want to do in terms of, like, proving that they're creating a hostile working environment is you. I do think you need... I think you need proof. Not proof, but, like, at least, like, re- records. What are things you can get in trouble for at work? Setting off the fire alarm when there's no fire. People don't like that, do they? No, but usually they will catch you if it's you who done that. Not unless you get their fingerprints on a pair of gloves and wear them. Something to think about. Feels like a crazy convoluted oh, plan. I have to think about the word thunder cunt. I'm just really happy with that. Cock juggling thunder cunt is so fun. <sighs> what do you, um, M? Whose whose perspective would you take? Do you think? Um, I think like, I mean, Catherine's is more sensible. <laughs> Sorry, Catherine's is more sensible. Realistically, more, that one's going to work. I think I'd obviously have the most fun gaslighting them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. M! Catherine's M! comes with a lot of homework and a lot of note taking, yeah, including post it notes and timestamps. Like, no, it just involves like a notebook. <gasps> Tell you what is really fun. You know, when someone's like standing up and making coffee or getting a drink of water, oh, yeah. you go up behind them and you just like whack the back of their knee. And because they're not expecting it, their whole body collapses underneath them. <laughs> Or like you know, when, like or you've dropped that. Someone better down to get something, and you hold their head down. You think work and it's like the weakest position. Do you remember that at school? So you think you should get fired for bullying, physical bullying? <laughs> yeah, physical bullying. This is yes. And like they they fall, they go to get something, and you hold their head down, and they're just like squirming. What school did you <laughs> like go the to? Courtmore in Fleet, Hampshire. It and sounds like an absolute like lovely den of iniquity. We've got flower beds. And is then, that where the pole is? Yeah. Jesus. You uh, remember me so well. But Christ. I do think there's there's so many ways to like humiliate and belittle someone. 
And I think that is the best way to do it. Also, everyone loves a classic like leg out fall over. No, like, I funny. don't think it's everyone loves the bully. I don't think you should become it's the not problem. Bullying. It's a fool. You didn't push them. They fell. <laughs> I will never believe that you drive me mad by accident anymore. Do you know that? Oh, I'm doing everything on purpose. Yeah. The problem with that is it requires me to believe you to have a level of intelligence that I. You know I'm very smart. Have as yet afforded you. You know I'm very smart. I think you might be a conniving cow. A you cock, think? A conniving cow of a cock juggling thunder, thunder cunt is what you are. I'd love to be a cock juggler. Could you imagine if I had a sex drive enough to cock juggle? Oh, you think that I'm would more have like to a be... finger juggling you thunder think it, cunt? But... Like always just fingering myself. How is that juggling? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of the cock juggling as a as a sexual act as much as like everything's a that of a that of a celebratory it. behavior of a like a scorned woman like now that you've cut the cocks off you juggle them Sunil's trying to blast my you know what I'm saying moment. excuse me what he's got a ferragun gun he's trying to blast my clit off with it I he's thought, like, don't you do it? Don't use that on your clit. It'll blast it off. But that's what we sound like. He's trying to do he's that. Trying to do he's it. trying to ask you not to use a theragun on, on my your vagina. Cunt. Yeah. Listen, you. I wish you all the best. Honestly, I think you can do Catherine's way or my way, but either way, you'll thrive. I think my way is more fun. I think your way is toxic. <laughs> it's toxically fun. <laughs> we can't always look at toxicity as a bad thing. Being toxic towards a toxic person is good because it's two negatives make a positive. Is that right? Do yes. two wrongs make a right? Two, two wrongs make a right. No, no, no they, they don't. <laughs> they famously don't, do they? There you go. Two rights rarely make another right. What? Hello. What? <laughs> Help me out here. Two wrongs. So, but, but don't what's make a, a right. negative then? A double Is a positive. Ne yeah. Yeah. So they're being negative. You're negative to them the situation's then positive no i think you're misunderstanding the context in which that phrase is used okay how it's like two negatives in terms of statement rather than two negatives as in sentiment okay they're a thunder cunt you become a thunder cunt everyone happy hello you let us know how you get on babe email us Can't when you make a decision ending like this i think if it doesn't you'll soon be telling us your name and age and oh, i can't so like sad. it's gonna be a reintroduction to you do you still want to hang out oh i never want to hang out i thought we just worked together oh, we hung out so good <laughs> we hung out we so went good. dancing at annie's birthday party. yeah that we did cute. we should talk about this in the extras we should wrap this up for now okay bye okay bye thank you so much for listening subscribe on youtube <laughs>